Hello, Martha Alderson, Plot Whisperer, back again. Uh, I feel like I should cover my eyes because the sun is so bright. And yes, this is early November, but this is early November in Santa Cruz. <laughs> And we are on step 14 for the How Do I Plot a Novel, Memoir, or Screenplay. And we are now firmly in the middle of the writing project. And um, I talked about in, you can hear some of the supporting cast behind me. It's one of the clues to tell you where we are. I hope, I hope some of the other um, supporting cast start to talk too because they were making a lot of noise just a little while ago. But they're pretty quiet now. Anyway, um, so on step number four, I spoke a lot about the exotic world, which is where you want to start taking your character deeper and deeper into the exotic world. And I gave some examples about different ways to look at the concept of an exotic world. Um, so if you'd like to go back to step four, you can see those examples. I used a screenplay and a couple novels, and I think I used a memoir. So you can at least get a sense of what we're talking about in terms of the exotic world. And actually, the more exotic, the better. Because when readers are being challenged by so much to be able to read, you know, their bookstores, their things online, their, um, their books and, uh, you know, newspapers and magazines to be attended to, that you want yours to really pop. You want it to really stand out and to be something that is uniquely different. So that if you're doing the middle of the story where we're still in sort of the ordinary world but with just a different frame of mind, that's one thing. And then you can go really deep into that world, the ordinary world or the world that we think we all know about in order to mine the really exotic and more unique details about it. But otherwise, if you can go to a completely different land or world or occupation or something that the reader knows very, very little about, in the middle of the middle of the story when the energy of the story starts to drop a little bit because you're having trouble to keep coming up with making the stakes higher and higher and higher, which is what happens when the line is steadily going up toward the crisis, which will hit at the three-quarter mark. You want to have, um, you can have the energy of the story sort of flatten out a little bit, and that's where the exotic world can come in. Because as long as the reader is learning something new and is being sort of enchanted by this new world, they don't need to have um, action-packed one right after another because all of us get the sense in reading that even when things slow down in the middle of the middle we know that there's some sort of overarching conflict tension suspense or curiosity that is always hovering there and we know that there is going to be a moment where the energy is going to rise to a crisis point I mean as much as we don't maybe want it to happen we are aware that it will happen in the story so um, it's almost wonderful to slow the story down in the exotic world because then when you start to build to that crisis, it's so dramatic because it's so different than this calmer, sort of fun, you know, uh, exploration and discovery in a world that the reader might not know much about. And I just want to do a little disclosure now is what we're going through are just tips in order to keep you at it. The hardest thing about writing is to just keep at it every single day. And especially when you get to the middle of the story, usually the energy for writers really starts to flag. You know, you've left the comfortable place of the introduction, you're now deep into the middle of the story, which has a lot of, um, you know, antagonists of their own for the writer. So please make sure that that what we're doing is just a means to the end, but the end really is writing your story. So don't do these sorts of things if you feel the energy for your story. Write. Whenever you feel the energy, write. And even if you have to leave markers saying, I'm not sure what's going to happen here, but I do know a scene or two that's down the line, then write that scene that's a scene or two. Because what you really want is to get a whole rough draft done in order to be able to stand back and analyze what your story is really all about. So, um, 
so what was I going to say? Oh yes. So all of this is in Blockbuster Plots, Pure and Simple, my book, and this is out for sale on Amazon and on my website, uh, Blockbuster Plots for Writers. I do have a blog, The Plot Whisperer, so feel free to go there. And I'm on Twitter. I try to do a plot tip or two every day on Twitter. Um, so if that helps you, and it's uh, under the Plot Whisperer. So um, go ahead and start to think about how exotic you can make your world and really develop it and have a lot of fun with it. And be sure to come back for step number 15.